On the breakfast, the National Assembly sets to amend some relevant sections of the Finance Act to solve 11.03 trillion naira deficit proposed for the 19.76 trillion naira 2023 budget. Also on the breakfast, Presidential Campaign Council of the All Progressive Congress accused the leadership of the Nigerian Congress, NLC, of being hypocritical over the burning issues of fuel subsidy removal in the country. Don't forget, we'll also be looking through today's newspapers and analyzing the biggest stories of the day. Welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's a beautiful Tuesday morning. As always, we start off with conversations that make, you know, have a lot of engagement. But just before then, I am Messi Ebukbo. Now, this conversations for our top trending are conversations that have different engagement in different quarters. We start off with uh, Britain and world leaders bidding farewell to Queen Elizabeth II. We'll take a track down. When we return, we'll continue with the conversation. Please stay with us. And it Have I been us. so long time with you? Jesus saith unto him, hast thou not known me? Philip? Have I been so long time he that with hath you? Hath seen me? And yet hast, hast thou not Father. known me, Philip? Thanks be to God. He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. Thanks be to God.
Well, a little bit of what actually transpired yesterday. And if you were not able to catch up with, you know, the events virtually, uh, or you were probably not invited for the event, then that's it. Finally, you can say that Queen Elizabeth II has been laid to rest. And she spent four days lying in state at the Palace of Westminster to allow members of the public pay their respect. And I've seen a lot of persons complain about that. But it's a tradition. You know, that's actually the tradition. Her coffin was moved to Abbey earlier yesterday, that's Monday, for the state funeral service, which was scheduled to begin at 6 a.m. So it started, of course, at that time, E.T. And the global event witnessed several leaders. We're talking about global leaders and heads of state from across the globe in, you know, central London to attend the state funeral of Britain's Queen Elizabeth II yesterday. And I'm sure that a lot of persons... I have finally said, okay, it's over. Even though we saw different, you know, reactions from the space, we'll definitely get to that. But around 500 foreign dignitaries were attending that service, or attended that service, uh, the West Minister Abbey, including President Joe Biden, kings and queens from across Europe, and leaders of Commonwealth nation. Biden also uh, had arrived, you know, uh, earlier amongst many dignitaries accompanied by, you know, his wife, the lady, First Lady Jill Biden. Uh, in attendance, you had a uh, German president. You also have the Italian president who was there, Irish president, amongst others. But what actually stood out for me and some other persons is that, you know, six countries and a former U.S. president were not invited, you know, to the ceremony. And we're talking about Russia President Vladimir Putin, Belarus, uh, Syria, Mania, Miami, uh, Venezuela, Afghanistan, and U.S. President, former U.S. President Donald Trump. But reason has actually been given for, you know, why they were, they were not allowed to attend or they were not invited for that particular uh, for the event. There are several reasons why six of these countries, including former president, not necessarily the former president, or you understand, you know, the riots and all of the issues surrounding the elections. Uh, and so that might just be it. But um, Vladimir Putin, President Vladimir Putin had congratulated King Charles II to his ascension to the throne, but the relationship between the United Kingdom and Russia have collapsed since Russian invasion of Ukraine. That's one of the reasons. Now, Belarus was not also invited to the state funeral because President Alexander Lukashenko is considered a close ally of Russian President that's Vladimir Putin. And you understand what that means. Uh, Myanmar, as well, has not been invited following the coup that happened last year. Afghanistan, as well, Syria, and uh, Venezuela. Now, there were all the countries that were invited on the grounds of uh, ambassadorial grounds, and then you have North Korea. China's vice president uh, also attended, but there are also some other issues. I mean, that's it. But those who didn't really attend, I think that the entire world was in central London yesterday. Everyone, those who were in London, uh, who were not invited because it was an event that was based on invitation, uh, probably would have attended via television or probably on social media, YouTube and what have you. And for Africa, I think that's a time where Africans will rest. But we saw several videos that uh, surfaced yesterday, especially a video where some people say it was Nigeria, but I think that, you know, we would do better, really. So we saw another procession. It was really comical, if you ask me. But I think they said the video emanated from Cameroon. They were also having their own procession and honoring the Queen. It is what it is. And finally, she's been laid to rest. Uh, away from uh, the Queen's death and the fact that she's actually been laid to rest and you had a lot of persons attending, not forgetting to mention uh, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria represented President Mohamed Buhari. Just in case you're wondering if Nigeria did not get the invitation, we got the invitation. Uh, another on our top trending this morning, it has actually uh, generated different engagement. I mean, we started the conversation conversation yesterday uh, where we're speaking with the Nantes Secretary that were headed to the, um, you know, the airport. And the, the intention was to actually protest the current strike that happened, but we'll take a break now. Let's quickly take a look at what transpired yesterday. When we return, we'll discuss some more. Stay with us. <laughs> Federal government 
government, the values, the the headlights more than even with the with the poor citizen of this country. And this our action is going to affect the majority of the headlights of this country. And it's also going to affect the integrity of the federal government by seeing students coming out and seeing the major international airport in the, of this country. And that is why we have came out here today to protest as the second phase of this struggle starts today. That is why we are choosing the international airport across the country to start our agitation. Right, how long are you going to be here? As far as that strike, uh, and the federal government call of the strike, as far as that call of the strike, we will be coming here repeatedly every day. We will be coming in the international airport until we decide another phase for the struggle. Well, what happened yesterday was that uh, you had members of NANS storming Murtala Mohammed International Airport in Lagos. The essence of that was to mount pressure on the government to resolve the seven months industrial strike by ASU. And so the protest was still ongoing at the time. And you can see that gridlock was, you know, on top of the front burner. A lot of Lagosians and those who were in Lagos or maybe moving from one spot to the other had suffered because uh, there were some videos and pictures where you see persons, especially those who were uh, tra traveling, you saw them with their luggage uh, moving and uh, trying to get to their destination. And uh, recall that this student body had earlier threatened to ground activities at the local and international airport across the country. Uh, and so they lived up to their expectation, and that's what we actually saw. But it's really unfortunate because we had a representative, someone who spoke with us yesterday. Unfortunately, the network wasn't very pleasant, but there were several questions that we asked. We understand that this is the issue. The strike has been lingering, and of course, um, you know, the issue... Uh, have not been resolved, the government or us is yet to compromise. But really, uh, what's the rationale behind coming to Lagos? And some people say, hey, you know, the airport is actually a federal, you know, project. Or so you have, uh, it's, it's a federal, because one would expect that if you were going to have a protest, the president is in Asso Rock. Asso Rock is in Abuja. And so uh, the National Assembly, what have you, the protest should have taken place right there. But it was a different case entirely, and you had it in Lagos. But we're hoping that these would actually, you know, force the hand of government, or maybe ASU, on the other hand, you know, to return back. There would be some level of compromise. We're hoping that uh, there might just be, you know, some answer. I really don't know because uh, a lot has actually happened with the strike action. But it feels like when the conflict situation where both parties are not willing to compromise, very saddening. But let's see how all of this protests uh, with Nance will pan out. Now, quickly, there's tension in the Niger Delta, and that's not something that we want to, you know, agree with, especially with the time where we're struggling. Niger is actually struggling, and the economy is struggling with, the, you know, not being able to meet up with quota production. We're talking about uh, the quota production that's been allocated to Nigeria and all producing countries by OPEC. Uh, over time, we have fallen short of it. And right now, uh, it's been reported that 900,000 are, I beg your pardon, 900,000 barrels per day is what we're talking about. And, and that's really, really not up to it. I think we're really going down. But um, the pipeline surveillance contract awarded to uh, government of course, uh, a certain Tom Polo has caused an apprehension in Niger Delta. So if you're wondering what's causing all of that tension, it's because of the contract that was awarded. Now, the deal was sealed by the Ministry of Petroleum Resources and uh, the National Petroleum Corporation, that's the NNPC. Nigeria at the time was producing around 1.6 million barrels per day. As of July 2021, that was last year. However, by July 2022, the output had dropped to around 1.1 million, million barrels as we speak. But however, uh, like I mentioned earlier on, we're within the range of 900,000 barrels per day. Quite worrisome is that 500,000 deficit forced the country's leadership to act and seek funds to finance the proposed 2023 budget of 19.76 trillion naira. And so the government is actually, you know, acting in a certain way to ensure that we, we, we have the desired result that we want to see. So there's this tension. 
the tension is between Tom Polo and Dokubo, As Asari Dokubo. And clearly it's been stated that how would government assign or allocate such contracts, you know, to uh, someone who's actually not from River State. So uh, we're talking about former ex-militant right here. Asari Dokubo has been very vocal, and this is what's causing the fracas or, you know, the contention. And so there are several interest groups and several persons who are very interested, you know, with the situation, and that's been going on. That's it on the top trending. We take a break. When we return, it'll be time for us to go through the front pages of our national dailies. Please stay with us. <laughs>